Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again, and welcome to another review. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at Pop! OS 1904, which was just recently released. And let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are on the default desktop of Pop! OS 1904. This is almost completely unchanged from the version as shipped by the System76 team because I wanted you guys to see what it looks like in general without any changes whatsoever. So if you were to install it, you would see exactly what I'm seeing here. We have the default wallpaper, which has a robot theme, which is a common theme with this distribution. And then what we have is the latest GNOME desktop. It's a lot cleaner than the Ubuntu version. You know, of course, we have Ubuntu 1904, which also ships GNOME, but it's a different implementation of GNOME because they include different tweaks and settings and different uh, plugins. And by default in Ubuntu, you have a theme or a panel here on the left hand side, which we don't have here. It's just overall a cleaner desktop. So if I click on activities, you can see the basic layout, so I'll be brief here. If you've already seen GNOME, then you know exactly what this is like, but we have our workspaces here on the right-hand side. So here I have some notes about Pop! OS that I was looking at in Firefox. Then I have a clean workspace here, and then I can open up individual applications on either the same workspace or a different one, and then I can actually change between them by using keyboard shortcuts, which they also customize. So here in the files window, you see some of the changes that they've already made. So again, this is GNOME. This is the latest version of the GNOME desktop, GNOME 3.32, which has a speed increase I'll get to in a minute. But I just want to highlight the fact that they have changed the theme and updated it. We have a new icon theme. It looks very similar to the old one, just updated. And I think it's great that they're continuing to put some focus on the UI experience, especially considering GNOME by default doesn't have that great of a theme. And I think that I prefer the Pop! OS theme over the Ubuntu theme, but again, that's up to individual taste on that. But we can see that they did update the theme here, but that's not all they did. One thing that's pretty cool that exists here and does not exist in Ubuntu is if you go to Settings, so I'll go there, and then I'm already there on appearance because it remembers the last thing I was on. Now you get the standard options here. You could change your background. So if I didn't like the robot theme, for example, I could just, I could basically go with this wallpaper. So I'll do that and select it. Of course, wallpaper changes. Um, no surprise there. But what is new is these two options down here. We have a dark mode option here in appearance. How cool is that? So if you turn that on, and which I'll do right now. So now you can see that dark mode is enabled. And I actually like this a lot better personally. I think it looks better, but I'll just go ahead and change it back to uh, show you guys the review as shipped with our System76, how they shipped it by default. But we also have slim mode. So pay attention here to the uh, window header or window border here, here at the top, which you could say is you know kind of thick and waste real estate. So if I turn this option on, you'll see that it actually shrinks and is much skinnier. So let's go ahead and close this files window here and see if we open a fresh one. Uh, we can see that the window border is, of course, skinnier. And I think that's great because it doesn't waste that much real estate. Now, to be fair, it's not actually going to make that big of a difference. I mean, how, ma how much space did we actually gain back? Just probably a um, handful of millimeters or something like that. But Every bit of screen real estate goes a long way, so you can customize this any way that you want to. Now, to be fair, these are not necessarily new features. They had a dark mode already available via GNOME Tweak that you'd have to go and find, and they also had a slim version there as well. So this was available before, but what's different here is that they just made it very easy to get to, so you don't have to go to GNOME Tweak to get to that. And I really like the responsiveness of this distribution. Now this in particular is going to be the same as Ubuntu 1904 because they both ship the same version of GNOME. But what you're going to find is that everything is just much more responsive when you go through the different menus here. And it may not look very different in the video, but I think you will notice it if you are comparing this release and a previous one that everything is just very responsive. So taking a look at the system resources, what I'm going to do is go ahead and close out of most of the applications here. And then let's just bring up the system monitor. And we can see here that uh, the resource usage is fairly modest. Now I'm not sure what's actually using close to 10% of the CPU. That's a bit unusual. 
And I'd have to say the memory usage is a bit high at 1.9 gigabytes. I'm not actually sure why that is. I'm used to seeing that actually be a little bit lower. But it is a responsive distribution, but if you're looking for extremely lightweight, you can see that this actually isn't the distribution for you. But this is a really old laptop though, so of course it's going to be uh, a little bit, have a little bit higher resource utilization than others would have. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. But generally speaking, it's a matter of taste. I think that the distribution being very responsive and the GNOME desktop is awesome, so I'm happy to have it on my computer. It is my favorite environment. And even though that might be around 1.9 gigabytes, I think that's actually misleading. It's still gonna be lower than competing operating systems, so keep that in mind. And then moving on from there, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the release notes to go over a few of the things here. So here I am at the main page, so let's go ahead and scroll up. What do we have here? So this is the actual release notes for the release, and I've already gone over like the theme here, so of course you already know about that. And then they mentioned the slim mode and the dark mode, which I've already showed you. Now, the refresh install option, I think is amazing because what that actually allows you to do is reinstall your distribution, but not to remove your actual files. And I think that's awesome because that gives you an option to refresh, which is why they call it that, your distribution, and basically reset it and keep all your data intact. Now, you should, of course, you know, back up your files just in case something goes wrong. This isn't going to uh, make it so that you don't have to back up. It's just gonna make the process easier if you ever want to refresh your machine. And these types of changes are the types of changes I think that sets Pop! OS apart from Ubuntu. So it's really easy to say, well, it's just Ubuntu with a new theme. Well, no, it's not. There's actually quite a few small changes. It's impossible for me to go over every difference in this video. I have gone over the differences between Pop! OS and Ubuntu in a previous video. But the thing is, even after that video, I still find new things I didn't know before. Like for example, their extra repository that they add in that doesn't come by default in Ubuntu, but comes by default in Pop! OS is actually a rolling release uh, repository. It doesn't mean that Pop! OS is a rolling distribution because it's not, otherwise there wouldn't be a 1904, but the particular repository that they give you is a rolling repository. So if they add a new application there, they add it for everyone. There's additional applications they add that aren't in standard Ubuntu. So with Pop! OS, you do get quite a lot of benefit. So if you're interested in getting started with Pop! OS, here at the download page, you can scroll down, and you'll see that we have the download link right here in this big download button will download 1904, the latest release. And then we also have the LTS version available right here as well. And that brings me to one of my main points here, which is pretty much the same point that I had with the Ubuntu 1904 release as well, is that there just isn't much reason not to choose LTS. There just aren't any features that I feel someone wouldn't be able to live without. Yes, there's some nice things here. The user interface is enhanced. There's the speed boost from GNOME. It does feel more responsive. And there's refinements all over. But the problem is that LTS is supported for about three years, whereas the non-LTS version, this version right here, is only supported for about nine months. Now, if you're already running a non-LTS version of Pop! OS, it's a no-brainer. Definitely upgrade. You won't lose anything. You'll only have features to gain. However, if you are running 1804, I definitely recommend that you stay on that version because you have the longer period of support. And then you just hold off until there's a compelling reason to upgrade to a newer release, in which case there actually isn't in this case. But don't get me wrong, this is a great release and Pop! OS is a fantastic distribution. It is my favorite distribution and you can tell that System76 is passionate about the desktop with the attention to detail that they actually put into this release. It's just very, very responsive and it just seems to me like they thought of everything. The UI refinements, as I mentioned, are definitely welcome. The new features like the slim mode and dark mode being easily accessible are welcome. The refresh install is also great as well. I just think that this is an amazing distribution. I just wish that there was a little bit more of this release that would be a compelling reason to upgrade from a previous one. But overall, you can't go wrong with Pop! OS. I haven't had any problems with it. And one of my favorite things about it is that they just they're not only their attention to detail, but they also include 
tweaks for gaming as well. And I don't think a lot of people realize this. I mean, their repository, they include Lutris, for example, which is a fantastic utility you can use to help get some of your non-native Linux or you know games running in Linux and even some of the native ones as well. It just basically gives you a single place to put all of your apps or all of your games. And that's not exclusive to Pop! OS by any means, but they put that in the repository. But what is exclusive is that they have a separate version for NVIDIA users. So if you have an NVIDIA computer, then you could download the NVIDIA version, or you could download the Intel slash AMD version for anything else. So that way you're always getting the best experience for gaming because you'll have the version of Pop! OS that is custom tailored for the type of video card that you have, which also means your games are going to run better. Now that's not specific to this release. That's the case in 1804 as well, but that's just one of the many things that I love about Pop! OS. They just have a passion for the desktop, and I think that they get an already great distribution, Ubuntu, and they make it even better with all the minor and major changes that they add to it. I think overall it's just a fantastic distribution and definitely check it out. But if you haven't yet checked it out, then I recommend you go with Pop! OS 1804, which is a long-term supported release, and then you just stay on that until there's a compelling reason to upgrade to a newer version, or the next LTS version comes out, whichever happens first. So with that said, if you've had a chance to try out Pop! OS 1904, leave me some comments down below. I'd like to hear what you guys think, and stay tuned, guys. I will have new reviews coming very soon, so I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below, and there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.